for giving that extra stanza so I could get myself composed. <laughs> yeah, both those songs just slay me, so mm -hmm. use me. Little did I know when I come. So I'm turning into a guy that it was gonna change my life. I give myself away. I told this story the last and only time I last spoke at the Wednesday night service last fall. That um, I, I'm a member of Screen Actors Guild, and they were having this thing that they were doing for Labor Day, and they said they wanted people to help out by going to different churches, and centers, synagogues, etc. And so I said, I'll do it. And they were like, cool, um, do you have any places that you want to go? And I said, surprise me. And so then they let me know that my assignment was the church that I was baptized in as a baby. Wow. And then, you know, Catholic churches now sound like gospel choirs. They say, that's all. I give myself away. And I'm just like, well, I'm done. But I like that first song, Let the Sun Shine In. Yes. And then usually say, God is the sun. Yeah. So, so if you didn't make that connection, it's let the God in you shine. Yeah. 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 Oh, God is good, yes? yes. Mm, if you don't know it, you better ask somebody. <laughs> so this month has been the CSL theme, spiritual laws and how to use them. And I've given that a subtitle called What Mom Said. Because, yeah. yes, we started off in a real awareness that the presence of God is revealing itself through mothers. Mm -hmm. And when Percy Lane was here and he was talking about the breadth the length and the width of your being that's asking you to recognize the cause, the law, and the effect of your being. Mm -hmm. And so on Mother's Day, when I said to you, a mother serves, I like to do recaps on the last Sunday, in case y'all didn't get back. <laughs> <laughs> on Mother's Day, the second Sunday, I said a mother serves, so not only is the divine feminine the receiver, of cause, getting the full impact of all that God is in every way that it expresses. Mm -hmm. Freedom, love, beauty, joy, every way that God expresses comes directly into law, that feminine, that divine feminine that says yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the divine feminine not only says yes, but because it is the creative medium, it allows whatever that God has given to be made manifest. And that is why we are not simply manifestors, although we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we are recipients of God's gifts. Yes. Yes. Kawala started us off with meditation this yes. morning talking about take every opportunity to yes. give thanks for grace. Yes. 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 Oh, I know you know what grace is. Yes. Yes. I know what grace was when I, I could only find my unmarked keys and I was in a hurry to get into my office this morning. And the first key I chose when he ever met me was there and said, thank you, God. Yes. See, every little thing yes. is not little. Yes. It's a reminder that the presence of God is with you always. And you may not recognize how the kids say you better recognize. Because when you recognize, that's going to determine what follows in your life. Oh, I don't know where I'm going, but God does. Amen. Amen. So, so last week, I got you back on track. I said, I'm about to see. And so I was inviting you to be able to see the light that is in each one of us. Yeah. But to first see the very presence of God in and as yourself. Yes. Yes. Because it is only as I see myself as God that I can know my oneness with each and every one of you. Yes. 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 Amen. 
And see, God is so real to me. And the realer I get, the realer God gets. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and, and I'm just telling you, I get this. If you got this month's a Science of Mind magazine, you saw my teacher on the front, uh -huh. Dr. Michael Beckwith. And, and, and the quote is, we are yielding to the next stage of our unfoldment. Don't leave this planet one day before you share your gifts. Yeah. Yeah. So today I'm talking about a mother allows. See, you are law, mm -hmm. just like you are cause. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? Mm -hmm. Not stopping at the stop sign kind of law. Not, you know, gay marriage kind of law. But a law that is spiritual. Yeah. And the thing about spiritual laws is that they are always working. Mm -hmm. Just like gravity is always working. Yes. You see nobody standing up and falling out on the floor. That's because there's gravity. There's an energy that is holding you up. Just like you can't see electricity is still operating your computer and your refrigerator. There is an invisible law that is operating at all times. And so what we are looking at in this particular situation is that the law reveals what God is saying to us and it acts upon it. Mm -hmm. Here's what I say in divine workplay in this particular week. When I know who I am, I have a divine embrace of heaven's grace. Amen. See, that's 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 me absolutely knowing that I'm not a mere mortal. So I don't have to focus on saving my little life. Yeah, yes. But I do get to embrace the divine. And when I do that, all that God has is mine. Yeah. And see, the thing is, when you say a mother allows, that's saying yes to life. Mm -hmm. That's saying yes to all that God has to offer. Mm -hmm. My phone is on, I'm going to tell you why later. But you got to believe that God works. <laughs> Um, there are just a few lessons, so I guess y'all really need me to talk a long time today in order for y'all to get it. I'm going to talk to you about the parable of the importunate widow. You can look that up in your Bible. That's Luke 18, 1 through 8. The importunate widow. Jesus was talking about this parable, and this is from a text that those of you who took Bible wisdom are familiar with that class ended, and I know that there are many people who were transformed by it. Mm -hmm. But in Learn to Live, it, it, it mentions the impartunity in the law. Mm -hmm. And it talks about how the, the widow kept asking the judge, kept asking the judge, and, and the judge said, okay, this woman is just going to wear my nerves because she was religious, she was persistent. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let her have what she wants. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna let her have it. And so, you know, I, I, I'm kind of like of the school of, of Ernest Holmes practitioner. Once I speak my word, it's done. Mm -hmm. But if you don't believe it's done, then you better keep asking. Yeah, yeah. And that's not because we are beseeching God. That's because we are asking ourselves to believe. Right, right. Because it is done unto us. As we believe it. See, if you don't believe it, it ain't coming. If you don't believe it, it ain't yours. If you don't believe it, you can't claim it. So, when it says, okay, that's the law saying, yes. That's the law saying, of course, my beloved. All that I have is yours. And so to say a mother allows, it's like, your own biological mother or your adopted mother or however you know mother to be allowed you to be who you were. And if she didn't, you still ended up who you were anyway. <laughs> but, you know, I always remember Deepak Chopra talking to his kids, talking about, you know, you just got to follow your passion. And sometimes parents are willing to do that when they're not caught up in their own fear. Mm -hmm. 
you know, about what you should do to be safe, or what you should do so that you, so I don't have to support you forever. <laughs> and what you should do, you know, if you want to get this or that or the other. But a mother allows you to make those choices, particularly once she has given you the information. And God is always giving you the information that you need for your life. Yes, yes, yes. So I invite you to pay attention so that you know, so that you grow. Amen. Okay. So the thing is, science of mind says, we are allowed to choose man, woman, Everybody has the ability to choose what you will do with your life. Mm -hmm. And you are unified with a law that automatically produces that choice. Yes. So the way that the spiritual law works is by allowing yourself to believe. Mm -hmm. Because you can say, oh, well, I want a Rolls Royce, but do you have it? Amen. Amen. Right. If you don't believe that you can have it, have you said or something back? Amen. If you said something better, then you really open the doors and the windows for God to pour out that yes, blessing yes. that is uniquely yours. Yes, yes, yes. yes. A mother allows in the Bible, Jesus talks about the peacemakers. He calls the peacemakers the children of God. And Ernest Holmes says, we never associate warriors with the divine kingdom. Struggle and strife are outside the kingdom. They cannot enter in because of their confusion. Mm -hmm. Only peace can enter the gates of reality and sit at the table of love. The divine host serves not this bounty to confusion, but distributes his gifts to those who enter his gates with peace in their minds and love in their hearts. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's why we have to start service with meditation. Amen. Amen. Because if we want God to be invited into this place, we need to be in our peace. Mm -hmm. We can't continue to fight those battles that we fought all week long and then expect God to be able to minister to us. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Struggle and strife are outside of the kingdom. That's not part of how God works. Mm -hmm. God works outside of the struggle. So you may want to release. Amen. You, know? Amen. you may want to let go of holding on to that old beef that you had with somebody. Mm -hmm. You may want to let go of holding on to that idea that you have lack and that you don't have enough and that you are not enough. Because that's nothing but struggle and nothing but strife. Mm -hmm. So you can't enter into the kingdom. You can't see God. You can't know God. You can't serve God. You can't allow God because you are the block that is standing in the way of your own good. This host is not serving. This host that is hosting our lives, hello, mm -hmm. is not serving confusion. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody, you know, sent me an email, they had a prayer request. And, 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 and so I had to penetrate the confusion mm -hmm. because I could see the effect. And I could see the likely causal mental idea that brought about that effect. Mm -hmm. And so I had to penetrate the room and say, it looks like this, but the truth is this. Mm -hmm. See, God is wisdom. God is not ignorance. God is clarity. God is not confusion. Mm -hmm. And so God will give you more when you are allowing, when you are remembering that you are law. Yes. Open to receive all of God's grace. Mm -hmm. And this God does welcoming you mm -hmm. into its grace with love. Mm -hmm. 
in your mind and in your body too. Yes. Now, I want to talk about the body temple a little bit in a moment, but here's what I want you to know first. Ernest Holmes said, while you do not have the ability to destroy the idea of yourself, you do have the ability to deface it, to make it appear discordant, but you cannot deny the divine image. Mm -hmm. No matter what you do. Yeah. No matter how badly you may talk about yourself. No matter how you may try to hurt yourself physically, mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally. Isn't it funny how we, we trip into this, these relationships and think, oh my God, was I a sadist or I mean a masochist or what was that about? There's always a lesson. There's always a lesson in that person that you think broke your heart was an angel. Yeah. Bringing you the message about yourself and what you need to know for your unfoldment of your soul. See, it's important for us to know that God is a gracious God. So that when you have nowhere else to turn and you find yourself falling on your knees and looking up, it's because you weren't looking up before, you were looking down and you got whatever was on the ground. You want to look up. Not because God is in the skies, but we want to look up so that we can be in alignment and attuned to our higher self because I am that I am. But I can't be having a conversation with the I am down here when it's time for me to really be stepping into my God self. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so what I'm saying to you is what Ernest Holmes further says is that the scriptures say God has made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Yes. Looking for God everywhere oh, but inside you. Yeah. I'm going to make this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to busy this. I'm going to busy that. But where's God in the midst of that? Because without it, you ain't doing nothing. It's not going to happen. And if it happens, it'll only work for a little while. So, Ernest Holmes reminds us that we live in a universe of love as well as a universe of law and that one is the complement of the other. The universe of love is pulsating with feeling, with emotion and the universe of law, the executor of all feeling and all emotion. Mm -hmm. See, so whatever you do with your emotions, there's going to be an effect because law is operating. Yes. So if you're given love, you're going to get love. Yes, right. And I tell you, sometimes when I'm not feeling love, I start getting more love. Amen. I'm like, well, shoot, it got to come from somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it might as well start with me. Yeah. I ain't going to find it if it don't start with me because I won't be able to recognize it that I didn't have it. Amen. Of course, the miracle says you can't give anything that you don't have. Come on now. Yeah. And then the, the, the Science of Mind textbook says, only our own concepts limit us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Reali realizing that conscious thought operates through a power which is infinite, mm -hmm. we see there can be no limit to the power to heal other than the limit of our ability to conceive that power as healing. Yep. Amen. Amen. I mean, doctors are good, doctors are fine, they have skills, they have knowledge, but the thing is, they can only do so much. That's why we have our wonderful pastoral care ministry that lets us know when somebody's having a challenge. Yes. And Kimberly Satterfield does a great job of yes. letting us know, the practitioner board know, what's, what somebody's going through. Yes, amen. So that we can send our love in that direction. Yes. yes. So that we can absolutely know the truth for them while they may be laboring under the burden of some dis-ease. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. And I'm not talking about this piece of the body. I'm talking about this piece of the mind that accepted yes. Yes. that something other than their home is true. Yes. Yes. So I want you to know that the universe is the result of the contemplation of the divine mind, which yes. is God. And as the poor, as the, uh, see, I mix them up. <laughs> the science of mind textbook says, God creates by contemplating its own I amness. Mm -hmm. And this contemplation through law becomes the objectification of the self realization of the infinite mind. I'm going to break that down. Because that may be a lot for you to take in. <laughs> but this is key God contemplated itself. And it and is loving of itself because God is love. What else is God going to do but love? Mm -hmm. Created each one of us. God loved itself into Georgia. God loved itself into Kawada. God yes. loved itself yes. into Anthony. God yes. loved itself into Rebecca. Yes. God loved itself into Gabriel. Yes. So you get the picture? Yes, yes. You couldn't be here without God thinking about itself in you need a result of that. Mm -hmm. Amen. So you are not made of dust, mm -hmm. as it says in some places. <laughs> if it's dust, it's not dirt. Yes. Ooh. If it's dust, it may be angel dust. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what I know is that Adama means of the earth. And it was just simply of the earth that we have become these human beings on this terrain and needing this apparatus that is our bodies to navigate through the eye until we can reach our union with the I amness of our being, which has no body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But your I amness cannot exist without your mind and body because if you have no thoughts, if you have no feelings, if you have no body, you do not exist. So the mind-body-spirit connection is such that they are all interdependent and working together as your life. See, that's how we come into being. See, the divine image is key. So know that you are still subject to the law of your choice. Say your neighbor, what do you choose today? I choose the joy. I know that we have some challenges in terms of dealing with each other, and particularly around race. And I'm going to be having a, a community healing forum. Invite all your friends to July 14th, where we're going to sit down and talk about. I lead you through spiritual principle. We do some healing work. I've done it all over the country. It's healing. Yes. But I was looking at this video and this woman was talking about how the N word cannot be used by certain people because it can't be used by the oppressor, et cetera, et cetera. But there was an interesting notion that she brought up that I wasn't aware of. Anybody familiar with the Iranian prophet called Mani? Mani. Yeah. So there was a thing called Manichaeism that was in the third century. See, when I learn stuff, I like to share it with folks. And Manichaeism was a religious movement that was founded by Mani, again, an Iranian prophet in the third century. No wonder they have so many issues. Anyway. <laughs> Manichaeism introduces the duality of good versus evil. Okay, so that's probably where they pulled it from when they were writing in Genesis about, you know, you can't eat from a tree of good and evil was really a distorted. It was about, you know, you can't just eat from, you can't just consume the concept of good and evil. You can't just do it without some instruction. You need God's guidance. That's the real story, in case you didn't know. But back to Monarchism. What they did further was they talked about light versus dark. When we all again talk about God as light, and we talk about dark as being the absence of light. Mm -hmm. And then some people interpret it to mean, well, light is good and dark is inferior. Mm -hmm. And that's how those particular notions came into being. 
See how you can't do nothing without God. Amen. So what I want you to know is that you are a vehicle for good. Yes, yes. You Whether are. you be white, black, Latina, Asian, whatever your physical makeup, that's just an aspect of you that you require for your particular lesson for this particular journey at this time. Whatever you needed to know, you chose this body of experiences so that you might come into an awareness of who you truly are. Yes, yes, yes. So if you happen to be transgender or queer or same-sex loving or intersexual or, or bisexual or gay or lesbian, just know that whatever this process is of recognizing yourself and accepting yourself mm -hmm. as the perfect being that you are, yes, yes, a particular yes. set of challenges that come yes. with that still bring you back home. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. Still bring you back to the temple. Yeah. And the temple that we're talking about, the temple that Solomon built, the temple is that place where you can yeah. only reach the holy of holies, what you have surrendered, the nonsense, I'm going to ask you to play a little Vanessa as I lead us into a little something right now. I want you to know that all of the trappings are just apparent. Mm -hmm. yes. That who you are may be invisible, but it's the realest part about you. Yes, yeah, yes. And I invite you to see yourself not as poor, but as pure light. Yes. If it's comfortable for you to do so, please close your eyes and open your hands and allow yourself to be open to this divine energy. Oh, 